Welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, created and hosted by Scott Knudsen, to explore the crossroads of horses and business. Now here's your host, Scott Knudsen. Hi, and welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Whether you're listening to us on the radio on KCAA, our NBC affiliate out in California, or watching our podcast on one of our many platforms, we appreciate it. Today, we have a very special guest. We're going to have a lot of fun today. She is a U.S. dressage rider, Sarah Mason Beatty. And Sarah is also a great entrepreneur. I can't wait uh, for the show. I've been looking forward to it for a few weeks. And uh, Sarah, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Scott. You and your team have made this so painless, and I'm really excited to join you today and get to have this conversation. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it's all my team. It's not me. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> they they uh, they help so much, and Steve and all the guys, they're so wonderful. So so we're so happy you're on the show. So, uh, so let's just take it all the way back. So when did you start riding horses? I'm really excited to be able to tell you all that. And I also hope I don't get too long winded. I am, um, as you mentioned, I'm a dressage rider and I don't know if this would be helpful or not, but before I even get into my origin story, I could give you just a, a very quick uh, synopsis or explanation of what dressage is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Super. So dressage is an equestrian discipline. Um, between horse and rider involving the execution of precise movements um, yeah. by the horse in response to barely perceptible signals or what we call aids from the rider. So um, executed at the highest level, it's supposed to show off the suppleness, power, exhibit the partnership and harmony uh, between the horse and rider in the performance. So mm -hmm. if I was going to relate it to something, it was like couple skating. Um, the degree of difficulty at the highest levels of dressage is immense. Um, what the horse and rider have to work on through the movements together, um, but it right. looks seamless and effortless. And um, similar to skating, uh, there's a panel of judges um, watching the performance between the horse and rider, and they are scoring each movement. Um, and at the end, those scores are added up to create an average. So um, the movements are given a score between zero and 10, uh, zero being the movement was not executed and 10 being just perfection, um, really showing off that harmony. So 100% um, on a dressage test would be the highest score you could get. That's almost unattainable, which makes it <laughs> that much more fun and really a, a lifelong mastery to um, not only train your horse to understand and be a willing and excited participant of that partnership, um, but to then master the sport um, as much as you can uh, to get the highest scores consistently as you can. That was great, great. I, I was gonna ask you that. So I love what you say on your website, the, the art of movement. Yeah. Because it is, it's, it's so beautiful to watch. Thank you. I think when it's executed the way it's supposed to be in the sport, mm -hmm. um, it really is harmonious and, and flawless looking, um, much like watching the ballet or, like I said, um, ice skating. Just looking almost effortless, even though you know as a rider, any athlete um, doing a performing art sport that there's a lot that's, go that's going into it. That's really cool, performing art. I love that. I, I love that. I haven't heard that before. And, 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 uh, so, but I see like the Western disciplines are trying to do more dressage and, and maybe they were and didn't realize it, you know, uh, because of the name. You know, it's funny. I've been at some competitions recently where they've crossed disciplines. They've had, um, the dressage riders there and another discipline there. And it, it makes the shows next level fun because you are not only getting to experience your discipline and cheer on um, everyone surrounding you, but then also uh, get to see this other wonderful discipline that you, at least for me, um, I know very little uh, about disciplines outside of dressage, ironically, because I've, I've been doing that for 30 years now, for, for three decades, only dressage. I started in dressage and that is all I've ever wanted to do. So that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, there's nothing better than just seeing the rider and the horse just as one. And yeah. that's what every horse person strives for, you know, whether whatever discipline it is. 
Yeah. Uh, there's yeah, there's a special feeling. The time, at the highest levels, I think it's very difficult, if not impossible, to compete a horse at, at Grand Prix, which is the highest level of dressage. Mm-hmm. when they are not only a willing participant, but truly enjoying what you've taught them, which is why it takes so long um, in dressage, for example, the horses that are competing Grand Prix that are riding on the U.S. teams, such as Pan American, World Equestrian Games, Olympics, those horses are between the ages of generally 11 to 16 or 17, maybe 10 if you're lucky, when they're started under saddle at three or four. So that means every day, each hour that you're working with them, because, I mean, let's face it, and this is, I'll go into this later, but it's part of the reason why it's so important to have a string of horses when you're making it to the top is mm-hmm. those horses may only be working in their discipline three or four hours a week. Um, so those three or four hours compounded week after week, year after year, you have to be communicating with them so clearly and so effectively that they are wanting to do the work for you. And they're also gaining the agility and muscling in the right spot to be able to do uh, those really difficult movements that we're asking them at the highest levels. Makes sense. Makes sense. And, and, you know, when you, you're in that spot, that sweet spot, when your horse is ready and is a full partner, whether it's the arena, the ranch, you know, you can feel it or, or dressage, yeah. you know, it's just a special feeling. The best. It really is. You know, I go get some of the ranch with some of our performance horses, you know, and they see the halter. They're already dropping their head. Like they can't wait to go do something. I know. And that, that's a special yeah. deal. And you put the art of dance with it, like dressage, it's just so beautiful. Um, I, I, well, I admire so much what you're doing. It, it is, it's really cool to see across the disciplines, how just that, uh, base level rapport is so important with these animals. Right. Oh, I love that. I love that. So, so how does, um, I'm going to jump around. There's so many questions I want to ask you. Uh, so how do you select a horse to maybe start or how to ride at a high level? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, okay, so I'll I'll answer this and then (laughs) I'll go back to your other one, which was origin story. Um, So this would tie into your your question of how I select horses. This, Mm -hmm. I think, ties well into kind of a a later part of my uh, story, which is sort of where I am now in that um, it... To me, it takes a team. Um, I import my horses from the Netherlands. And so that means I go over there to scout horses and I don't speak Dutch. Um, I have now built connections over there, but when I was first scouting horses over there, I didn't know anyone. And I feel incredibly fortunate that um, my coach, whose name is Kelly Casey Mykrantz, she's an incredible coach and and as also a wonderful friend um she has had a relationship with a couple named bob and esther they run ten walled horses um over in the netherlands she has known them for almost two decades now and when kelly um started coaching me i pretty early on met bob he would come over from Holland um, to the U.S. several times a year. So we got to know each other very well. Uh, He also got to know my riding very well. Um, And then four years ago, I had fundraised enough money to syndicate my my first horse or not. Well, not the first horse I owned, but like the first horse I was going to purchase through syndication. Um, And Europe is ahead of us or has traditionally been ahead of us in their breeding programs. The, the U.S. has in some incredible breeding programs for dressage horses now, but um, traditionally um, Europe has been stronger uh, mm. in breeding dressage horses. So I went over there um, for my first scouting experience and my husband, Chris, went with me and it's the most unreal i mean an 11 on a scale of one to 10 from fun um that's all yeah it's so cool bob put together i think that first trip 30 young horses top quality young horses um that i rode over a three-day period to select from and again this is a ton of work he puts in on the back end um, gathering those horses that he thinks would fit me well um 
So mm. <laughs> we drive through the Netherlands, through beautiful countryside to barn after barn of just the most beautiful properties you've ever seen. And then um, I would sit on the horses there. We get back in the car. Uh, we talk about what we like and what we didn't like. Everyone gets a vote. You know, um, if there's something that's not sitting with you exactly right in intuition, you say that, you know, everyone's really, re everyone's opinion is really respected in that car. Um, so that hopefully at the end of the trip, you're seeing, because there's so many horses, you're seeing yeah. things really clearly. Um, as to which one may be the best fit for you. I uh, I love starting with the young horses because you have a huge runway of building that. rapport with them, bringing them along. Um, they're going to be less expensive to acquire than uh, horses that have a large amount of training. Mm -hmm. um, so what I when I sit on a horse, well, first off, I'm I'm looking for a horse that fits me size wise. Um, I'm not a, uh, I'm a pretty small person, well, I'm five, seven, but, um, pretty tiny. And so I, I want something that physically matches me well. Um, and then I, even as a young horse, I want to see a horse that can both push through the stride and care has the idea of carry, you know, it might mm -hmm. be, they might be too young to ask for collection, which is a really important element of dressage, but they, they have that idea in their head. And then I, I want a huge heart. You know, I want something that I feel like when I'm asking it to do what I'm asking it to do, even if it knows almost nothing, that it has a high degree of wanting to do that. Um, and then I like something very sensitive, like maybe something that would intimidate other people. I really, really like a very sensitive horse because I think at the upper levels that really um, pays off. Yeah, it, may, it makes sense because you don't want your, your, your not, not cues, but your movement. You want it to say so flush, just the lightest movement yes. you make. You want that horse to feel. It yeah, makes sense. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, in the last four years, we've done three trips um, to acquire horses through Bob. And when I take someone else with me, I try to link uh, two days onto Amsterdam on the front end. Mm -hmm. Um, like my, my husband with me the first time I went alone. And then my mother went with me this past time. And it's, it's such a wonderful time to get to explore that city. It's one of my favorite places in the world. It also gives us, um, some time to recover from jet lag. And then Bob picks us up and we're off to the races. Um, I went in May and over four days, we saw, I think 55 horses. Incredible. Oh, yeah, incredible. it's incredible. It's a ton of work on his end. It has to um, be to be that organized. You know, that's yeah. a lot of horses to ride and, and look at for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's it's unlike any experience I've ever had in my entire life. So oh, I look forward to it. It's got to be fun. It, yeah. It's got to be fun. And, and you know, so we're about to take a break, but there's a lot of people that watch our show that aren't in the horse world, but they love entrepreneurs and they love the stories. So when we come back from break, we're going to ask Sarah, how do you get horses from the Netherlands back home to America? So we'll be right back with the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. 
That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love, and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, they're little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms. Drink Rebellious. Hi, and welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Today we have Sarah Mason Beatty on. And Sarah, we were just talking about going to the Netherlands to look for horses. And then when you select the perfect horse or horses, how do you get them back to the United States? First and foremost, we have to make an offer on the horse. And what they're asking may not be what we end up paying. There's always a negotiation. Um, And after that is settled, we schedule a vet check. And the horse goes to uh, a local vet. Um, I have one in particular that I love using over there uh, for what we call pre-purchase exam, where the entirety of the horse is looked over um, from the heartbeat listened to, to radiographs, uh, occasionally MRI to something to make sure Mm. we like the way it looked. Um, The horse is watched moving on soft ground, on hard ground. Um, They do what are called flexion tests where um, they isolate a particular joint. Um, The horse's leg is held up and then um, after a certain amount of time, it's put down and the horse trots off. So all of these are different modalities to see if there's any lameness detected. the entire pre-purchase is put together. Uh, it's If I'm not there in person, it's also filmed for me. So it's sent awesome. to me so I can watch the whole thing uh, in the US. And if we're happy with the way everything went, um, blood is drawn um, to make sure that the horse doesn't have any type of disease. It's sent off. Mm-hmm. That generally, that process generally takes seven to 10 days, which is the most painful because you think to yourself, Okay, all of this hard work that's been put in, um, not just the shopping for the horse and selecting it, but, um, you know, on the back end, the funding, the fundraising that I've done to syndicate the horse itself, like a lot of hopes and dreams seem to be coming together and then it just stalled. You Uh, wait for that blood work to come in. You don't transfer the money or anything um, until you get the clear on the blood. Um, And then what we do is once the money has been transferred, and I, um, you can do that through your bank. I've used a currency service called mm. OFX, which I typically get better uh, currency rates from than my bank. So um, that money is wired. Once everything is done, um, Bob and Esther pick up the horse that we purchased and they keep it at their place for about a week. Um, they ride it, they observe it, again, just, getting a final stamp of approval that everything's okay and the way we want it to be. Okay. So describe what it's like on that plane with a crate and a horse because they're taken care of so well. Yeah. And and that's your that's your horse, you know? So I know. did you get to watch or did how was he arranged in the airplane? Yeah, um, they are put right next to each other um, in however many the crate holds. Generally, it's three. Um, and they're given food and water throughout the entire flight. And it's the crates are tarp, so they can't see what's going on, which is actually comforting to them. Right. Um, Absolutely. You know, I've in the horses that I have personally brought over, plus all of the horses that have come over in the barn that I'm at, which is probably close to 30, somewhere between 30 and 40. Not one of them has had a difficult time with Isn't that, that cool? ride, which is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think they're really comforted by the fact that they're with other horses because they're herd animals. Um, they're with people who know how to handle them. Right. And so each step, 
although it's nerve wracking for me because I've just made this investment um, or my team has made this investment, um, I have to say it's been in all the times that we've done it, a really seamless process. It's actually when they get dropped off to you and you're like, I, this is awesome. This is what I chose, but you know, now I need to get to know you and yeah. be happy and comfortable here. That That's sort of the shock to the system. That has to be so exciting for you to go there and look through 40 or 50 horses and select your one or two, yeah. and then they come back to your place. Yeah, and sometimes um, we'll take a trip and for whatever reason, that's not successful. Either we select one um, and it unfortunately doesn't pass the vet check or we just don't find one that's quite the right fit. And then mm. I go back over. Um, that happened the first time I went over, uh, we found one, it didn't pass the vet. And then I went back um, six weeks later. The first time we went over, my husband and I flew KLM direct. So it's like a 10 hour flight. We stayed in Amsterdam two days before that was like very romantic and special. It was my first time. So it was just so fun. Wow. Um, yes. Then we didn't find the horse and come hell or high water. I was going to go back over immediately, but we, on my return flight over there, instead of going through KLM, I booked on wow air, which I <laughs> thought, I'm not sure it even exists anymore or like it went away and maybe now it's back, but it's um, a no frills airline. So, you know, no water or any, I mean, nothing, no Wi-Fi. Um, you had to fly it. Did you have to fly? <laughs> I, I did. And the seats are like cardboard, but they route you through Iceland. So um, I went through Iceland. Bob picks me up. We had a terrific trip. Um, but the problem was I, I actually, uh saw so many nice horses there were two it came down to two and i thought to myself i i think i know what the right one is and and my whole team thought okay this this is the one but there's always a maybe when you're that close a question in right. your mind so the most painful trip was on the way back um I don't know instead of a 10 hour flight you know being routed through iceland it's like a 17 or 18 our trip with no Wi-Fi on the plane, I, I, I thought I was going to lose my mind. You know, we couldn't <laughs> communicate. I couldn't communicate with my husband or my family to be like, you know, please tell me I made the right decision. So I was just, uh, it felt like I was on tough. An island so by tough. Myself, just in, sort of in my own personal. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a great problem to have, right? When you're mm -hmm. following your dream and your passion and Absolutely. you're like, about to make this huge decision that's gonna get you one step closer to your goal. It's the best problem to have, but yeah, yeah I'll never forget. I, I, yeah, I must have been- Well, sweating. I mean, it's the ultimate entrepreneur decision. I mean, because it's emotional for sure. And it's important to the business and it's it's a relationship you're about to build off of this horse. So it is. um it's a tough deal. And to be away from many phones for 17 hours, it's gotta be tough. It had to be tough. Well, that layover in Iceland was was helpful, but then to board and have to take that longest stretch back by myself. Um mm. yeah, that was tough. And it's it's funny because the horse that we selected on that trip, he was three at the time. It's been four years, so he's seven now. And he's incredible. I mean, I have, um, I have no doubt in my mind that we made the right decision. So everything's, everything always works out the way it's supposed to. That's but, great. I was going to ask you if you ended up with that horse. So that's yeah. awesome to hear. And when I look back, I mean, I, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine not having him and having accomplished all of the things we have so far. And he's only seven. So I just feel, wow. I feel so lucky that it worked out the way it has. And like I said, the next one, we bought from video and uh and this last one um was really was really special we saw i think the nicest group of horses cumulatively that we've mm -hmm. seen thus far wow. um and my mom went with me who i'm very close with and close with my family we got back on may 2nd and may 24th i think it was she was um, diagnosed with, uh, stage four colon cancer. Oh, so, um, we did find a horse on that trip, Maxon, he's five years old and he's now here with me in the U S and he's, he's incredible. Um, but that was, 
that really threw our whole family for a loop. So it's been mm. a tough time, even with the, yeah, I'll, I'll never regret taking that trip. It was a really, absolutely, um, yeah, really, really special one for so many different reasons. And she has been such a supporter um, of my riding throughout my whole life. And she had not been there. And I kept, you know, she'd hear all these stories and, you know, she's there at every show and seeing, um, all of my goals and dreams come to life. So getting to experience that with her was, yeah, there aren't enough words for it. Yeah, I wouldn't think that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. You got to take that trip with her and you have that horse and, uh, so yeah. neat. And there's a photo of Steve. I'm sure we'll throw up. We or throw up onto the reel. Um, we got in two days before we started horse shopping and, it was King's Day in Amsterdam, which is the celebration of the King's birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, no one had been able to celebrate for the last two years because of COVID. And I don't know why, but we decided, okay, well, we're here. This is the only time probably. I mean, maybe we'll go back during King's Day, but um, we have to go into downtown Amsterdam and see what this is about. And I don't think we've ever experienced <laughs> something that crazy. I mean, it was the... Dutch people know how to have the best time. And, you know, Amsterdam, even though there's a ton of canals and small streets, like along the canal itself is quite open. So you could just see a stretch of just everyone wearing orange, live music everywhere. Um, these incredibly kind women offered to paint our faces for free. So we had face paint on it. I mean, it was, um, yeah, something I, I will hold dear the rest of my life. So we oh, went cool. from that right into um, horse scouting and, and just an incredible experience. I actually found two horses um, during this past trip, but uh, one did not pass the vet. So Max uh, is the only one that came over. It, it's so much fun taking trips with horses or about horses, and you just never know what you're going to come across. Yeah. That's that's half the fun is the yeah. trip. Yeah, yeah I, no. I completely agree. And and when, like you said, when you find that one, that's the one you want to move forward with. It's uh, special. It's so gratifying. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's really special. So, so when we come back um, from break on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, we're going to ask Sarah, how do you get involved with dressage or with horses and how she did, but also how you can. So we'll be right back on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you for listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. For more information on Scott Knudsen, the Cowboy Entrepreneur, visit us online at CowboyEntrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, there are little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms. Drink Rebellious.
Hi, and welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show with Sarah Mason Beatty. And we were just talking about dressage and going to the Netherlands to look for horses to bring back. So now, Sarah, so how does somebody get involved in either the horse industry or dressage? Maybe they want to buy a horse to ride and take lessons, or maybe they want to do it from afar and have you help them. How does that work? Thanks for asking, Scott. So I have to say on on the riding front and training, I'm I'm probably the wrong person to, well, I could definitely put you in touch with someone to help mm -hmm. um, wherever you are in the country. But for myself, um, I, I don't train clients. My focus is um, specifically on the horses that I have. Um, mm -hmm. I, my goal is to assemble or build a team of five to six horses and then bring those horses along um, the U.S. dressage pathways programs um, to the international levels of dressage to hopefully someday be um, eligible for, for teams to represent the U.S. on a team. Awesome. Um, so that has been a very long and, and sometimes feeling slow progression towards um, towards that ultimate goal. Uh, but I've, I've tried to design my life in a way that um, I maintain flexibility to be able to go in the country where I need to um, at certain times with the horses, mm -hmm. and, uh, eventually, hopefully take them over to Europe for international competition. That's so so cool. um, it's a, a lot of work and a lot of planning, but um, I continue to try and analyze opportunities and, and see if um, the ones that come my way ultimately are a step towards the goal, the bigger picture, um, or yeah. if they are just a fantastic opportunity, um, but maybe not exactly in line with what, what that larger goal is. So um, as I mentioned, my coach Kelly, so I'm in the, the Bay Area of San Francisco, Northern California. Um, my coach Kelly is incredible. She's, um, she's, a wonderful person, really easy to relate to. So for anyone in the Bay Area interested in looking um, to get mm -hmm. into horses, then I would love to introduce them to Kelly or anyone else I know um, for riding. For anyone who has any interest in just spending time with horses, man, I would love to have them come out, meet my horses, watch me ride. So for cool. anyone interested in participating in a horse syndicate. So um, either owning part of a horse or um, helping contribute to my journey, my goals. Um, there's a couple different ways that people do that now. And I mean, <laughs> I won't surprise you when I say this, like every, every dollar that someone puts towards helping me achieve my goals is there aren't enough words to really be grateful for for that, um, and and not only that from a financial perspective, but I just think about my journey thus far and the people who have extended a hand either for mm. um, you know to help me in in business consulting and structuring of setting up those syndicates of you know when I was young giving me a job or an idea of a job so I could help pay for the horses. I mean the. Um, mentors that I have in the yeah. sport who have been there, who have been to the Olympics. I mean, all of these people have, there aren't enough, and not to mention my husband, who's just an, an incredible support and rock. There aren't enough um, thanks to, to those people who have already helped me. So um, the mechanisms mm -hmm. in which people financially help right now are um, either being a part of a horse ownership syndicate, which um, is comprised of two parts. There's um, the purchase price of a horse, which can either be done by one individual or by a group of individuals to um, to spread out that um, amount of money of the purchase price. Um, and then there's essentially a, a maintenance um, fee associated with the horse on an, on an annual basis. So I don't take a single dollar of the money. It all goes to um, helping pay for board, competitions, training, uh, vet bills, right. ferry bills. Um, and we have, um, or I should say I have, a tax deductible mechanism for people doing that. So there's um, a foundation called SCES. It stands for Southern California Equestrian Sports. And it's set up specifically to help riders with international goals, with, um, you know, podium goals, essentially, to 
um, to pay for um, their endeavors. And mm -hmm. so anyone interested in contributing in a, a, a way that's tax deductible to them um, can contribute to SCES um, in my name. And then I can benefit from that for the horse expenses that I have. So um, the syndicate members that I have now in two of, two of three of my horses in the current string are syndicated. Um, and so those syndicate members um, can have a tax write-off um, each year from that annual maintenance fee, essentially. Um, right. so, so that's how it works in the syndicate. And then I've had people just incredibly generous and wanting to support my journey. Very um, cool. Donate to SCES. Yeah, completely outside of the syndicate. You know, so that, they, that's so cool. They want to get behind your story. Uh, it's and, the and, only you way know, I'm able to do this on your website, the pictures of the, the guy, the one gentleman who's a, a syndicate member. And I, I love that, you know, in horse racing, that's also a big deal. So someone that it doesn't is. want to feed horses or clean stalls or be around or don't have the opportunity, they can still have a part ownership in a horse yes. and live that dream through you. Yeah. And that's and a really difference. cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To interrupt. That's okay. That's okay. The, the benefits outside of that, tax deductible donation um just like you said getting to spend that time with the horse following the journey i send out um newsletters that i put a lot of time into video content coming to hang out at the barn with your horse watching competitions with which right now happen throughout the united states but hopefully the goal is someday to take that not hopefully it, it, it'll happen yeah take it international and sure and have your syndicate members take that trip, get to watch their horse compete in the morning and then go, I don't know, get to taste cheese and look at castles. Like I just do really fun touristy things in some of the most beautiful locations without or throughout Europe. So, and um, I think just the relationships right. um, you form with those people and it becomes you know, very reaching outside of just connecting to have conversation and talk about horses. They, yeah. they really become such important members of my life. And I hope it, that I'm not. It, it's funny. It starts as a financial partnership, but really quickly it goes to an emotional, and a, a relationship <laughs> based, you know, uh, yeah. just because of you for sure. And also the horses, plus it gets them involved in something that maybe they couldn't do before. Yeah. And, well, and it's so really cool. Fun. Yeah. It's, it's really, um, it has added such an incredible, well, like I said, it's, it's the only way I'm able to do it is yeah. with their support. And then it's added such an incredible and fun element. I have this amazing team around me that's cheering for my success. And, and they also, you know, it's so important to have the string, right? Because horses, they develop at different stages. They get mm -hmm. injured. You don't want to push them. Like I said, there may be a my horse is only working in the discipline of dressage four hours a, a week. So as a rider, my own timing um, and ability, uh, I'm, I'm only going to reach the top if I have this group of horses that I'm able to continue, right. continue to bring along um, to that shot at however far they can go. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking to think about working for, let's say, 35 years to have this, this one horse that isn't quite ready for the team or has an right. injury because they do and to not not because you're pushing them or because something goes wrong in the training, but because, you know, just like kids, they fall and they hurt themselves. Well, or... professional athletes, you know, that just happens sometime and that's unfortunate, yeah. but. Yeah, so I think, but... Of the, I think of the string is, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna win the game if you're a basketball team with not enough players on the court. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, you know, that's why the string is so important. Yeah, so a absolutely. It's, it's a very similar thing. Absolutely. I can't believe it's already winded down our time together. It's going so fast. So, so for someone that's never been on the road with a horse, do you have a fun horse story that you can share? Oh my gosh. Um, from the road. Yes. I, okay, Scott, to be honest, I have I have so many stories that I would love. I love it. See, that's that's yeah. not even a trick question. Yeah, we, would need a whole, we would need like four more hours. But um, one great one is when I was 14, we were going down. We were taking the horse I had at the time down to a curring 
where essentially like they're analog they're there's different breed registries for horses. And mm-hmm. so for this horse's breed registry, it was going to be looked at by a panel of judges. So we took it from Northern California um, down to Hanford, which is by Fresno. Um, and my mom it said I could invite a friend to go with us. So my mom has two teenage girls. Um, our very old suburban is hooked to a trailer with um, my horse's name was Kayle, uh, Kayle in the back. So we made it down successfully to the curring. Um, it went well. We are trailering back up and we're right, we're really right in the middle of our trip. And the transmission blows on our, um, on our old suburban. And we were able to get a tow. Um, <laughs> we were able to get a tow with the suburban and the trailer with the horse in it, which I don't think is legal. <laughs> Probably not. No. To a gas station where we were left. They took the suburban and we just had the trailer and the horse on the tar, basically. And my mom with these two teenage girls at 5 p.m. So um, we called home to see if someone could get us, but it was going to be a good three hours um, before someone was going to be able to get down there. And I, I mean, I'm sure my mom wanted to run away and never come back, but (laughs) she's done. And these two gentlemen pulled up in a very nice sports car and offered us a trade. They said, we'll give you this car if you give us your horse. And, and honestly, like we probably (laughs) should have done it, but, but we didn't, (laughs) you know, know how they would have gotten home but yeah they were very serious like they i mean the car was beautiful and and in hindsight i'm sure my mom would have would have loved wow it. But, yeah i didn't even so, see that curveball coming man yeah, That's a trade funny. for a horse for a horsepower yeah. uh isn't that something you know yeah. you just never know that's what's so fun about it you know you never know what to expect and i know you've been riding your whole life and it's so cool you're you have that entrepreneur mindset where if something is going a certain way and you want to do it, something different, you just change up and figure out a way to do it. Yeah. And I think particularly with the syndicates, you know, they're LLCs. They, (laughs) I I do the bookkeeping on them. You know, my syndicate members get K1 tax documents at the end of the year. There's, there's so much that goes into it um, from a business standpoint, you know, there's legal agreements in place. There's, I, I try to make that as, simple and smooth as possible for anyone who wants to be to participate. But yeah, they are businesses. And if, and when those horses are sold someday, then it's set up that those people who have supported me will then reap the financial benefits of those horses being sold. So oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. I love they get to be a part of it and enjoy the journey of, of what yeah. a horse person yeah. does. You know, it's a crazy life, but they get to be a part of it. I bet they love the newsletters. I, I hope they do. I mean, I, I think it's uh, such a nice thing to be able to, um, not just for the syndicate members, but like for people who have shown any interest, um, to be able to receive updates and, you know, embed videos into those updates or in addition to the newsletter, send pictures or video content to just, if there's a period of time where, where someone's not able to come visit, the horses and see them right. that they can still feel connected to them. I also post um, a lot on, maybe not a lot, but I post consistently on um, Facebook and Instagram about the horses. So um, most of the syndicate members are tied into that, and so they get to see their horses that way too. I love it. So what what are your um what what's your Facebook and your social media sites so people can follow you and see what um, see what we're talking about? That's a great question. So if you just googled Sarah Mason hyphen baby, uh, I I bet you anything my Facebook, Instagram, and website would all come up kind of in they the do. top top result. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, they sure okay. do, and it's spelled B E A T Y. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's, it's such a fun watching the horses are just gorgeous and it's so fun watching. You can just see the enthusiasm, excitement in your face when you're with them. And it is, it's really neat. What keeps my heart beating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott, thank you so much for having me. I would love to do this again sometime. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Yeah, heck yeah. California, yeah, we'll make it happen. Also, I have to apologize to anyone watching. I I thought I mentioned this to you, Scott, at the beginning. (laughs) 
this very sad room I'm sitting in with the one wreath that sort of looks like a halo um, yeah. above my head. Yeah, it's a, I should have picked a better room, but hey, it's just what you do, you know. You just entrepreneur it and you deal with work. horses, and yeah, I love it. <laughs> this I is better it. than the barn office, so I'm sitting right here. I love it. Well, Sarah, thanks for being on, and thank you all for watching the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thanks. Talk to you later, Scott. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you to all the great sponsors of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. If you or your business is interested in being a sponsor of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, please call our office at 830-992-1786 or visit our website, cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love, and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, they're little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms, Drink Rebellious.